beautiful people welcome back to the canada info channel it's me wolo i am here today and i am happy to be here today if you're new to this channel thank you for coming thank you for joining just do one thing subscribe to the channel and give me thumbs up to all of my old subscribers who are still um watching my videos and you know some of my videos are old yeah they are old very old anyway but thank you so much you've been kind of the propeller that i need or the energy that i need to continue with this channel um you've seen the title and i want to talk about myself today and um, that has to do with my struggles with child care and then i'll talk about the child caregiver pathway in canada so um i gave back to my baby in 2021 and at the time i was living in the northern part of manitoba and in that part of manitoba it's not as if in that part of manitoba they had daycare you know for people who don't know if you come to canada and you're pregnant you have to register for daycare because there's scarcity of daycare everybody knows that there's scarcity of daycare they have licensed daycare they have unlicensed daycare if you want the license daycare it's very difficult to get a spot so you even during pregnancy you have to register your baby for a spot ahead of time now because i was at the time during my pregnancy i was living outside winnipeg but 30 minutes close to winnipeg and then i had to go join my husband where he was um and that was in the northern part of manitoba and our stay there was kind of i don't know i, I don't know how to call it but then we didn't know if we we're going to stay there permanently or you know we didn't know how long we were going to stay there so registering my baby for daycare at that point it was not it's not as if i i shouldn't i should have done that but at that point it was not making any meaning to me because i mean we were our plants were we we're going to leave um we had signals of leaving where we had signals of leaving that place to another place where we we're going to I didn't know then i i've told i've mentioned it before in this channel that the nature of my husband's job takes him to different places so at the time we were in the northern part of manitoba so i gave birth my mom came she stayed with me for nine months and then my my mother left and then my mother-in-law came stayed with me for about five months and then she left and then my husband also had left he left to another province i said i'm going to reveal these things later for now i'm still in transit i've been saying it so my husband left i was now left with my baby alone in the northern part of manitoba and she had turned one one year and some months and um, i felt there was no point staying there and i had to resume in winnipeg i still I still work if you don't know I still have my job and I still have my business as well so I had to resume and I was supposed to resume the next month so I had to leave the northern part of Manitoba and I moved to Winnipeg now coming to Winnipeg getting daycare was now a struggle and you have this registry where you have to go register or search for places where you have daycare and see if they have spots so you you go there i'll put the i'll put the details on the screen so you see the website and how where you can go to search for daycare if you're coming to manitoba if you're planning to come to manitoba it's better for you to start searching for daycare before you even arrive so i started searching for daycare um on that website the spots i was seeing they were not available i joined a facebook group a facebook group called winnipeg daycares i'm going to put the screen uh, put the details on the screen as well to also see people who were you know looking for daycare sometimes some daycare providers will post that they have availability and then you contact those people via facebook and then you you go visit the place and all of that so i was doing that and it was not working out fine so i started working and my baby was now staying with my sister my sister was she stuff she wasn't staying far from me so she would stay with my sister i'll go to work and then come back first of all i started working from home yes i started working from home but my performance was not 
well <laughs> i have to say the truth about i i don't know how to lie i have to say the truth my performance because i was just coming from an 18 months maternity leave my performance was not good at all so my supervisor said no you have to come to work so i had to go to work and then i left my baby with my i was leaving my baby with my sister to take care of at the time so i had to switch from full time 8 hours of work to part-time four hours that's four four hours of work in the office and then i'll leave my baby with four, four my with my sister for four hours go to work come back during break because my house is not far where i stay in winnipeg is not far from where i work it's just like five minutes to walk or one minute to drive so i'll just go during lunch break i'll come see her go back and all of that and then come back home and that was going on fine at a point it was not it was, it was not working out for me you know it was not working out at all she wasn't for the four hours i would leave her she would not eat if i don't feed her nobody can feed her she refused she was just you know rejecting food so because of that i just felt what's the point going to work and then all the things you're working for your baby is not even eating anything she doesn't eat if i before i leave the house she'll be sleeping but by the time i come to feed her she will not be able to take anything during my lunch break and i come back as in it was like starving for four hours which was not good so i now made the decision to take a one year leave without pay to focus on my baby at least i still have my business to give me income i'll be able to manage my business and then manage my baby at the same time so i i stopped working as around june july last year and um, i took one year leave without pay yeah it's possible if you're working with the government it's possible for you to take one year even up to five years leave without pay if you don't know that's the benefit of working with the government for private organizations you don't have such opportunities where you can just go like that and your work is or your job is waiting for you so i took one year leave without pay and then started managing my business um full time because i was doing my business part-time at the time but i had to start doing it full time to get income to supplement and um take care of my baby at the same time so i hope this story is not getting too long <laughs> okay so um then the hunt for daycare started so i started i will call all the places i'll send emails to they'll say no spots available the ones i see that are available i'll go and check and then they'll be calling some kind of funny funny amount like 42 dollars per day 50 dollars per day 60 dollars per day and they were not taking children below two and my baby was below two at the time so it was really difficult to get a daycare and that's the truth I tried all I could to get daycare, I couldn't. So now I now settled for, okay, you know what, let me just wait until she turns two. When she turns two, probably I'll get options that I can um, be comfortable with. So she turned two and then this journey started again, calling daycares, asking them for availabilities and asking them for their pricing, asking them if they are licensed, asking them if they, ha if they accept government subsidy. You know, the government announced that um, daycares should be accepting ten dollar per day and the ones i was seeing they were charging like sixty dollar to seventy dollar per day by the time you put all of that if at some point i was almost even putting her in one private daycare very expensive daycare i'll put it in for uh, the picture on the screen it's called vantage or advantage daycare they charge one thousand two hundred dollars per month for daycare and if you look at the cost it's almost the same thing as paying for mortgage and you're asking yourself why are you paying so much money for child care this is why most um canadians hardly or they decide not to have children or decide not to have more than one child because of the cost of daycare or child care if you put the calculation together it's quite expensive so my target was to actually get something affordable and licensed i'm i'm very particular about licensed daycares because you know you don't want to take chances with unlicensed daycares we've had situations of somebody putting their child in an unlicensed daycare and something happening and all of that but you know at the end of the day it is god that keeps a child i just wanted my child to be in a licensed daycare and also have um a daycare that acts that is subsidized by the government that's a ten dollar per day child care my goal was actually to make her go to daycare because she needed to socialize with her peers at least to de develop social skills with her peers sadly the ones that are available 
were the ones that are not licensed and they charge at least $20 to $30 per day. While the ones that are licensed, some of them charge as much as $40 to $50 per day. While the ones that government is subsidizing, which is $10 per day, you hardly see those ones available. So I decided to make a switch on the search. And um, on this website where you search for decades, you see both French, you see English, and you see both languages, that's the providers, the language they speak. And because I speak French, I felt I was searching for English daycares all this while. I just felt, what's the point? Let me search for French daycares as well. I speak French as well, so probably there could be a spot available for French daycares. And I searched and I saw a French daycare that was available. And funny enough, the daycare was just like behind me. I contacted the lady, she said I can come and inspect the place. I went to inspect the place, I liked it. I asked how much she said government subsidized ten dollar per day. Ah, ah, French, okay, fine. And that was how I signed up. And yours truly, my baby girl, has started daycare. Woo! <laughs> I'm so excited that at least four hours per day. She can stay for the full day, but she she doesn't like to take food from anybody. So she eats from only my hand. So because of that. She can spend four hours per day and then I go pick her up. So that's it. That's how I was able to get a daycare. And the good thing is that she's learning French in that daycare. And she comes home, I speak French to her as well. So that was how I was able to get a government subsidized daycare for $10 per day. And um, a French daycare where she's learning French from her, you know, from being a toddler. So that's my story about daycare, uh, my struggles with daycare. Now, which brings me to the topic of the child caregiver pathway. Now, because the government recognizes that a lot of parents, families face these struggles of children um, pr providing care for their children and at the same time going to work, they came up with the child caregiver pathway. Sadly, the pathway has limited slots, number one. It has limited slots. Number two, there is a lot of application backlog for this particular pathway. It's very, very sad that there are people who have submitted the application for permanent residence in this pathway since 2019, 2020, 2021. And out of these applications, only few people have been approved. Now, the government, um, in trying to clear up their backlog and clear up the mess around this particular pathway, they initiated another pilot in 2019, which will end in June this year to end june 2024 this year is a five years pilot that started in 2019 initially for those who would apply from outside canada you need to apply um first and then come in get two years work experience before you apply for your pr along the line they change that two years work experience to one year work experience and if you don't know it's a, it's a pathway that opens only once in a year it's like a lottery system it opens 1st of January, the fastest fingers, people who are, who are able to submit the application within the shortest possible time are the people that uh, will get an acknowledgement of receipt. With your acknowledgement of receipt, you can then use it to apply for PR and then, sorry, you are used to apply for work permit and then coming to Canada to start working for your one year work experience before you now be eligible to apply for permanent residency. So when I receive a lot of messages from different people asking for the child caregiver pathway, child caregiver pathway. They don't know that it's only once in a year that slot, that opportunity for this pathway opens up. It's only once in a year. And um, it's an opportunity where people like me, I could use it to, you know, help somebody to come in. But now there is, you have to look at how this is going to be effective, especially if you have somebody, let's say you have a sister in Canada and you can take care of children and your sister wants you to help her come into Canada to come and take care of her children. Your sister cannot just bring you in. You have to wait for January 1 to submit your application first. That she has to give you an offer of employment. She needs to have a CRA number um, that she would use in paying your salaries and payroll and all of that. And then give you an offer of employment which you would use to apply for your permanent or apply for the pathway in Gen January 1 at the beginning of the year and then after that when you get an acknowledgement of receipt you apply for work permit come into Canada start working with your sister or your sibling for one year after one year you you have you submit your remaining documents for your permanent residency to be approved 
because of the long backlog, like I said earlier, there are about 20 something thousand people waiting to get their PR. I don't feel that this pathway is a better pathway. If it is good for you to come in just for the, pro the time being, yes, it's fine. But in, in the long run, I don't see it as a, a good pathway where you have to wait for like almost three years, four years um, before your permanent residency application is approved under this pathway. Although the requirements to get, uh, what do you call it now, like language scores is not high enough because you still need these documents to actually apply for PR. You need to have language scores. You need to show proof of work experience that they have experience in taking care of children. I'm not just saying you have experience in care of your own child. You should show proof of experience, like maybe working in a nursery school, working in a daycare center. These are kind of experiences they are looking for. Or you show proof of education. If you have childhood, early childhood education qualification that you can add to your um, work experience, that's fine you'll be accepted because it is not everybody who submits an application that is eventually approved they they need to know that you actually have the experience in taking care of children before you can actually get your permanent residency approved so this is a summary of the child caregiver pathway for those who are asking if you have anybody in canada that wants to hire you to come under this pathway tell the person that the pathway for now um the pilot will be closed by june 2024 and until they announce another permanent pathway, it means that there is nothing can be done under this particular pathway. So, except the government of Canada announces by the end of June that they've made this particular pathway a permanent pathway, it means that the child caregiver pathway is actually on pause. Now, there's the other aspect, which is the home support worker pilot, uh, home support worker pathway, which I'm not talking about yet. I'm talking about the child caregiver pathway and um, how people can use it to bring their family members for those who have been sending messages sending emails sending all sorts saying they want to come to work as a child caregiver you need to get a job offer you need to search for a child caregiver job and you cannot come in even if you get a job offer today if you get a job offer in february you cannot come in now you have to wait until january 1 of the next year which like i said that they are going to end this pilot by june this year so until they announce that it is a permanent pathway there is nothing to be done for now so even if you get a job offer now there's nothing you can do you can't come into canada to come and work as a child caregiver until they make the announcement that this pathway is now a permanent pathway that means if it's a permanent pathway it means that it's only january 1st you can apply for your permanent residency once you apply and it's approved you get sorry you get an acknowledgement of receipt you now use that information to apply for your work permit for you to come into canada to start working so thank you so much for watching this is the information i said i was going to share by the way have you given me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up now at least i've sorted my daycare issues out and i'm happy that i'll become consistent going forward or sharing content about immigration to canada and life in Canada. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.